pleased to have Daniel Brill with me here in Studio Q today. Hello, sir. Hi. What a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Congratulations on all this stuff. Uh, it's, a, it's a big year for you. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, it's the first time that I've, I mean, I've been to the festival in Toronto uh, a couple of years ago with a German movie, but it's something uh, different now with uh, two movies and uh, interesting lead parts in uh, these fantastic, uh, yeah, two movies. I want to ask you about the Fifth Estate. I mean, given the, the recent Snowden and, and Manning incidents, uh, the Fifth Estate is a very relevant film, both in, in subject and approach. Is that what attracted you to it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. When I first heard about WikiLeaks years ago, I was sure that sooner or later they uh, would make a film uh, about it. And uh, I think it's one of the most important and interesting organizations of our time. And uh, I found it very clever, um, the... Um, uh, the approach that Josh Singer, the scriptwriter, and Bill Condon um, chose, you know, to to focus on the relationship between these two guys, Daniel Domschatberg and, and and Julian Assange, and to talk about the uh, the founding and uh, um, the development, and then uh, the success, and then eventually the conflicts. Uh, that uh, happened um, because of the success, you, and but it excludes all the speculation, everything which uh, happened afterwards. So uh, you you spent a fair bit of time in Germany. Did, were you aware of Daniel Dumscheid Berg before you took the role? Oh yes, he was in uh, German media uh, constantly. So um, it was interesting to play um, after Niki Lauda again someone uh, who is alive, a real person. Um, you feel certain weight on your shoulder and a responsibility, but uh, I can only say that I. Um, um, like Daniel, uh, he was very open to me. He was uh, willing to answer me any question. And it is good if, as an actor, you uh, um, you, you you realize that you can trust uh, the person you right. you're playing. Hang on a second. You said a few things there that I want to pick up on because those are all <laughs> interesting things. First of all, in terms of this film, The Fifth Estate, uh, based on WikiLeaks and, and, and Julian Assange, it's a complicated and messy set of issues being explored, and your character. Uh, changes in the course of the story. Uh, Berg eventually parts ways with Assange over how the, the leaked material was to be disseminated to the public. Before that, Daniel, what, what drew them together in your view? Well, I guess um, Daniel has always been an, an activist, always someone who wanted to change things. Um, and I envy that uh, um, because I myself know uh, how our generation is like, you know. But we, we always wanted to oppose against things and, 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 and change things. But we, uh, in a way, we didn't know how. You know, my parents' generations, they went to rallies and demonstrations and the enemies were clearer. Nowadays, it became right. all a bit complicated and in Europe, very blurry. Um, so... Um, uh, someone who uh, uh, you know um, had such a uh, clever idea of of you know using the internet as a as a powerful instrument to deliver transparency. Um, I think this idea was um, always something which interested uh, Daniel, and he had a certain talent uh, for that. But he needed someone like um, um, Assange. Um, a mastermind, you know, who would then eventually uh, um, draw him into that, you know. So it was a very symbiotic uh, um, and f and 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 um, and strong relationship. I mean, they they really at first uh, were very attracted to one another and had the same shared the same interest. Um, they and that happened in Berlin. They yeah. self-identify as activists uh, oh, yeah. very clearly in the yeah. film. Do, have you had, I mean, it sounds like you were an aspiring activist, but you, you <laughs> but um, unlike your parents, it's not something you've engaged in. You've been more of a slacker. Is that what, yeah. what to, to read yeah. between the lines? Yeah, I have a political conscience, but, you know, uh, most often I sit around with my friends and we discuss politics, but we don't actually do anything. I mean, we, I, 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 I go and vote for the, for the party that is, you know... Um, uh, th that comes closest to my, you know, uh, opinions and to my uh, uh, interests. But um, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a true activist. And in comparison to Daniel, whom I visited a couple of times, mm -hmm. and last time I know he, he lives in a barn next uh, uh, near near Berlin, and uh, and I uh, I saw that on the upper floor he has a he has a room which is uh, fully equipped with all the technical stuff you can imagine. 
And um, we were in the middle of a conversation and then two French guys came downstairs and I said, who, who are you? And he said, no, these are French activists who are here and they stay stay here for free and uh, right. just work on something. So I could I could see that, you know, he's truly engaged, you know. He, he hasn't is, taken he his foot off being, the pedal no, no, of no, activism. No, at all. Uh, t- how did meeting uh, Daniel Damscheid, uh, Berg, uh, change the way you understood your character and, and his decisions? What did you... What did you make of him in person? Well, he's pretty German, <laughs> so meaning he is very um, correct and reasonable and responsible. And uh, that was something that I could connect with. Uh, so, and because of these traits of character, you know, there was a moment in which, you know, he was just overwhelmed by the masses and the avalanches of information and leaks uh, mm. they had to cope with. And that was the moment in which he thought, wow, that's getting too dangerous because we're putting uh, people's lives in, in, in danger. And that was, you know, the rising conflict that he had with, uh, with Julian. But you said in, in, your, in an interview with the New York Times, you recorded us saying that uh, you had the impression you could totally trust Berg's integrity. Mm-hmm. Why, why was that so important to you? Well, it makes life easier if you have to play someone like that, you know. You don't have an interior conflict uh, playing the part, you know. You don't have to defend someone that you don't believe in. So it, it, it was just helpful to uh, to think and to know, okay, um, I have more or less the same opinions as the character I, I'm, I'm playing. Uh, you know, some people will watch this film. I was trying to, uh, as I was watching, I figure I have, I have my own opinions of, of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, and I would say many of them are benevolent. Uh, some will see this as an anti-WikiLeaks film, while others will see it as an endorsement, almost a promotion of this kind of activism. It certainly looks sexy at times. It's so much fun what they're, what they're doing. Do, do, do you think the film itself takes a discernible stand? No, I think it's pretty neutral. It's a dramatic thriller. It's 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 clear that it's not a documentary. It's a fiction movie, but um, um, as I said before, it excludes um, uh, a lot of issues that are still not you know that are, that are, uh, that involve a lot of speculation. So. Um, we are um, th- this, this this film is book, uh, based on um, on two or three different books actually, mainly the uh, the book written by the Guardian journalist and the one by Daniel Domscheit Berg, and that shows that you know you have already different um, mm-hmm. you know uh, opinions on on uh, in in the script, and it's definitely not an anti WikiLeaks film. It's a, not an anti Julian uh, Assange movie. Um, well, Julian Assange it, read the script and apparently called it a massive propaganda attack on WikiLeaks. Yeah, well, this, this is not the case. And uh, some of the um, um, things he's referring to in, in the media um, are um, issues that are not in the script uh, anymore. They were there okay. in, the, in, the, in the first version, you know, which was just the first attempt, you know, to, to write down this very complex and, uh, and delicate story. But uh, that was all... Uh, that is uh, all not in the movie anymore. So, you know, you say, you say it's a work of fiction, but um, so much of what we learn today, especially younger generations too, uh, but I mean, practically anybody, we learn from popular culture and we learn from a film like this. I mean, we faced this last year with Argo, where it was, uh, you know, uh, how much of that is a real story, and how many, how, how, many, how much are people learning about the 1979 revolution based on this this film? Did you feel a responsibility in taking on a role that could influence how people view a very real and important part of history? Well, yeah, definitely. I'm always um, uh, interested in doing these kinds of movies. You know, uh, topics, uh, subjects that matter, that matter, um, and that uh, you know every citizen should know about. Um, and I realized that talking to young kids in, in Europe, still a lot of them don't know that much about WikiLeaks or they don't know anything at all. So I think it's, a, it's such an important, uh, um, uh, again, uh, organization and what they have been revealing is, um, is uh, extremely important for all of us. And I how, think it's just the beginning of... Uh, yeah. How fastidious were you guys on set about getting it right? I mean, did, what were the conversations like with Benedict or about Julian Assange or, or with Bill Condon about, you know, trying to make this as historically correct as possible? Well, um, yeah, but Josh did uh, major work on that, you know. He was always very, uh, um, uh, very responsible and always in touch with uh, the guys who wrote the books. I was always in touch with Daniel. Whenever I had a doubt or a question, I would call him. Um, 
and um, and also you, you would need to ask Benedict uh, about his uh, communication with uh, Julian Assange. But uh, you know, we all knew uh, how important. Did that he movie have communication with Julian Assange? Um, I'm, 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 I don't know if You're I should, should answer to say. that. Yeah. <laughs> you really have to ask him. We'll have to go to WikiLeaks <laughs> to find out. I can, I can tell you that Benedict and I, we went to, uh, uh, to London before Christmas and listened to a speech that he gave from the uh, embassy's balcony, which right. was quite impressing. You know, there were many people gathering and... Uh, and he is very charismatic, and he's a very good. Um, this is what I was going to. I was going to ask you your impression of Julian Assange, having made a film that is is based on and, and playing a role of a character who was was at, at his side for uh, an important moment in history. I mean, he himself is a polarizing figure, right? Julian Assange. He in the film, he's at times depicted as very charming, also complicated, often an arrogant man. Where is is he a heroic figure in your view, or or are he and his agenda a threat to our security? I think it's too simple that the, I reading about it uh, because I read all these different versions. I read the unauthorized biography where you understand a lot about uh, Julian's background. So he had been betrayed when he was a kid being a hacker. So you understand in a way where the paranoia comes from. But it's all so complex. There's so many points of views. And that's nice that the movie ends, you know, with an open question. So everybody, f uh, every spectator uh, individually should, you know, seek the truth uh, for himself, you know, this this film doesn't give a simple uh, answer to these um, many complicated questions. So uh, talking about heroes or villains would be too simple. Mm. Uh, but it sounds like you, I'm just reading between the lines of what you said so far in this interview, you, you reside on the side of having some some sympathy for Wik WikiLeaks or believing that it's, it does some good. You know, the the idea behind it is 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 um, is is great. You know, um, um, transparency is important, and citizens should know um, and be aware of things that are happening be behind closed curtains. You know, they uh, um, it should be revealed what certain governments do, corporations do, uh, banks. Um, so, so why do you think people? I mean, it's fairly clear why governments fear WikiLeaks. You know, uh, mm -hmm. after the NSA thing came out, but, but it's less clear why some members of the public do. Why do you think this this kind of activism and citizen journalism makes some people uncomfortable? Well, they have to cover a lot of uh, a lot of bad things. <laughs> so it's it's uh, mm. and it is a, a a general question. That's why I think it's just the beginning. Because how do we deal with uh, information in a in a system in a world where you can uh, or must always fear that they, some people will um, uh, will be able to. Um, to leak it, yeah. to find out about the it, end and, of to, privacy. and to deliver it. Yeah, yeah. This is a. Just to go back to where we started, this is a pretty major year for you in North American movies. Uh, uh, Daniel Domscheit Berg isn't the only real life character you're taking on. You also portray Australian, Austrian race car driver Nikki Lada and Ron Howard's Rush. As you said earlier, both of these people are living. Uh, how do you change your approach uh, to, to, to roles, knowing that the people you're playing probably will be seeing the film? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just attended the premiere in London, and Nicky Lauda was there, so of course I was very nervous. I knew that he had seen it, and um, he he liked it, but still, it is a strange feeling, you know, to look over and 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 see the actual guy sitting there and and uh, seeing himself, especially in Rush. It's a very dramatic journey for for the character, and uh, for Nicky Lauda to relive. Uh, the moments of the accident and to see himself almost dying mm -hmm. um, from outside, it is it is it is strange. But uh, I I I'm very proud of both movies. I must say, the result is is um, is phenomenal. Um, I've been uh, very privileged to work with two fantastic directors, who are very careful um, and um, and clever in telling. These stories and, w w and where, where do you want it to go, Daniel? I mean, what do you really um, tell me about a bit about what you're in this for? You know, the Fifth Estates director Bill Condon said he thought you have the makings of an international leading man. Um, well, you're you're already a star in European cinema. Is is Hollywood stardom something you have aspired to? Well, definitely, there's so many. Uh, incredible directors working in Hollywood that of course uh, I, I would be a liar if I said that I did not want to work with them you know still I feel uh, very European I'm quite happy living between uh, Berlin and Barcelona um, I would be very sad to give that up but um, if uh, you never know
I, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. If if it means that I have to move somewhere for a for a certain amount of time, I I certainly would do so. Um, Very diplomatic but, response. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit too German to be right? asking. <laughs> yes, it's very, uh, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but uh, um, is there a is there a career that you look to and go that I would want to be that guy? Uh, I you know I I uh, whether it's uh, um, Daniel Day Lewis or or, or uh, Paul Newman or you know I mean is there something like that? No, there are many actors that I hugely admire and they've always been so and and. Um, and actors who motivate me to uh, to go on, especially actors who have had a long, long career and are uh, still there, you know, uh, working impressively and being hungry and, and happy with, with what they do. Um, so I aspire that. But um, um, I don't have a, um, a certain part in, in, in mind or, or, or an role, actor that I want to be like. A, no, no, not really. You're an amazing guy. Your fluency in English, Spanish, German, Catalan, and French uh, means you have a lot of career options that many actors don't. I'm, I'm profoundly disappointed that you can't speak Farsi. Uh, I mean, <laughs> why did you stop at these five? And apparently you're pretty good in Japanese, too. No, that's but a lie. Is that that's a lie? A, yeah, you yeah. can't speak. All right. Uh, how did you come to learn all those languages? No, it's just uh, I was born into a mixed family. My mother is Spanish, my father is German. Um, I was born in Barcelona. We have French family, that's why I speak French as well. And I grew up in a very mixed environment, and that was always uh, a luxury, really, because it's in, 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 uh, we would always live all these different cultures. So my mother. It's, it's also a reality of continental Europe, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I always feel a bit embarrassed when I'm in Europe and I think about North America, and most mm. of us here are maybe bilingual or trilingual, but so many people. Mm in Europe speak five or six languages. It's remarkable. Yeah, we are forced to, especially in Germany or uh, the Scandinavian countries or the, the Benelux countries, you know. All the countries that have been former world empires like the Spanish or the French, they're not so good in languages either, I must tell you. <laughs> Hollywood or England. Uh, Hollywood is is also becoming more globalized. More productions taking place overseas now. There was a, a, a big piece about how uh, some of the, the films that have gone on to become huge hits out of uh, uh, out of the Toronto International Film Festival are not American films. You know, uh, Do you think we'll be seeing more European actors winning major parts in Hollywood films as this trend continues? Well, that'd be a great thing, you know. I'm, I'm, uh, of course. What shall I say? I'm, I'm extremely thankful for that um, uh, change. Uh, I can remember working with Quentin. Uh, I found it so brave and courageous uh, the way he did it, you know, because I know that there were uh, American stars interested in in in, in certain parts in yeah. the movie. But he said, no, I just want to have Germans to make it more real and authentic and and different. And I think that's very clever. So uh, if the characters come from these countries, then why not? They should be played by the people um, from there. Uh, I think um, that will give us um, great opportunities. And it's also interesting to see how um, uh, the Americans uh, and Hollywood production companies and studios uh, like to work uh, abroad in Europe, you know, mm. not only for tax reasons, but also, you know, the facilities they have, their professional crews interesting new influences and I think it's becoming more global and more interesting. You just came in from London. You mm -hmm. had the big Rush uh, premiere there, what, yesterday you flew in, right? Yeah. So uh, the, both The Fifth Estate and Rush are these big high profile films. They're going to be backed by massive marketing campaigns. They'll both be poised to generate a lot of Oscar buzz and they're going to raise your profile to a, 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 a new level as an actor significantly. How, how, how do you mentally prepare for this period ahead oh this is uh I'm, I'm very zen at the moment <laughs> you do seem very zen yeah, you yeah. seem very calm <laughs> so, about all of this yeah yeah, yeah. have you been sedated no, have you been to, <laughs> they give you pills you to know, take an advantage is to be with someone my girlfriend is a psychologist so that helps <laughs> i always get my therapy for free <laughs> right, and right. she uh she grounds me and it's uh no it's it's um it's cool i just want to be you know uh enjoy uh, this momentum you know and not uh, get too crazy about it you know to stay with both feet on the ground but uh but just enjoy it and be excited about what is happening. And it's nice to be proud of the movies you're presenting and mm -hmm. you're promoting. Mm -hmm. You know it. Well, it's a it's a it's a really interesting film, a strong one, and you are fantastic in it. And it's a great pleasure to have you in Studio Q. Thank you for this. Thank you so much.